All right, guys, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about front-end management with Bower and GoPJS. But before we go into that, I first have to do a, a shout to Fahad. He could not be here today, and I have to take his, his spot. But uh, so he's a creator of Krogo, has been Cool. All right, so Fahad, uh, he's my coworker, and uh, hopefully I can pick it up all his, what he was going to do today. And the last point you see that's a nice guy, just a quote that he made, just saying. <laughs> so my name is Renan Gonçalves, I've been using KPHP since version 1.1, and I joined the team core on version 1.2. Uh, I literally, when I joined KKGC, my, one of my job was there was to create the migrations plugin. And currently, I work on a true company. It's a hosting company that does, we, and basically do, uh, we automate stuff. We, we have like a technical de department team, and we basically install new VMs, uh, manage hardware servers, all that from our panel development, or our panel admin. And you can find me on KPHP as Henan underscore Saddam. So Bauer, it's a packet measure for the web. Uh, but come on, how many package man managers do you need? Right? We have Composer, we have Jam, we have NPM, now Bauer. We have AP APT, we have a lot of things, right? But everything is, a, is, is all about having a, a right tool for the right job. And Bauer is exactly like that. It's for the browser. Just think of regular libra libraries and that we use as front-end front -end stuff. Think of package, packages like jQuery and underscore JS. Yeah. Damn it. It's for downloading libraries like that or packages if you want to call that. Uh, but why do you need that? Why not just use NPM directly or why just not grab the source code of the GitHub, GitHub repository and use that on your own repository, right? Uh, one reason is that NPM is recursive, so we have like a lot of trees, and it, if you have like different versions of, of package that needs like different versions of jQuery, or uh, two different versions of jQuery, or two different, different versions of Angular, that's not going to work on a, on a, when, when you hit the browser. You're probably going to have uh, jQuery, libraries extending or, or overwriting the old library, so you might not have your code application work anymore. So when you do, use Bower, because it's going to match uh, all the, the, the package that you're, you're acquiring on, on Bower, and it's going to try to match what's the right version that you're going to wind up. And if there is any mismatch, you can force a particular version using a resolution scheme. So, Let's try Bower. You first need to install it with NPM, so another package manager. Uh, 
I suggest you to install with a, a global, so it's going to be easier for you to, to run it, you know. Uh, after that, you're going to need a, a bower.json file on your root project. And that's going to basically say what, what packages you need, what dependencies are you're going to use, and what's the version. But where will you download the files? We don't want it to be then directly downloaded under the app directory. So we need to create another file to say which, where you want to, to, to do that. There is a file called bower rcc, and there are some scopes. You can define the scope in your global computer. So let's say that by default you want to install everything on the web root vendors directory, uh, but, but also you can have scopes on a user. So maybe you have a special user on a computer, and from that user you, you want to have a specific place where you want to install all the, all the libraries. And also have the, 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 the project scope. So maybe you are using a, different, a completely different project and you want to set up. So you create that file just saying what's the directory you want to create, and every single comp package is going to be on that directory. But like I said, just one list, not like three or anything like that. And for KP applications, we, I am focusing now on the 2.x version, so it's going to be on the web root vendors file, and that also means that those packages are directly accessible by the, by the browser. So after you define some, some dependencies on your, on your Bower file, all you need to do is do a Bower style, and you are going to see a lot of packages and also dependency of that package is being installed. And everything in is going to be on the web, directory, web root Windows directory. And you can also register your own packages in their registry. But I'm not going to do that today because of too much details. You can read it through how you can declare your own packages on the on a browser site. Uh, and if you guys want to have any questions, just fire up. Any questions so far? Uh, and after you have all those packages, you want to have a way to deliver one single file to the final user. You don't want to have all those different files and you don't want to even include those files on your HTML file, right? You don't have like hundreds of hundreds of, of included statements or things like that. So use Gulp for minifying and, and concatenating all the libraries into one single file. But it's not only for that. You can also use for any kind of automatiz automatization. You can maybe, maybe if you don't use it, wanna use make files, you can use go for that. And if you don't wanna use like NPM scripts, you can also use go, go for doing those repetitive tasks. But let's go a bit on the history of it. Uh, there was this grant project. A few months later, there was Gope, then Broccoli, and who knows, maybe a cabbage. But that's just kidding. <laughs> just like choose any name and put JS on the, on the end, and there you go. You have an, a brand new library. So like I said, think of repetitive tasks. You want to compile your last files. And like Anna was saying about Bootstrap, or you want to compile your CoffeeScript files, you can always use it for linting. Basically, you can put any, any kind of commands in there. You can just execute also shell commands from there. So let's try Gulp. So first you're going to need npm again. It's going to generate a new, uh, you, you need a, pack, a package.json on your, on your, on your pro project folder. And after you have initialized that, that package.json file, you need to install the dependencies. So you have two ways to install that. One way is to install using the, the global version, so you don't have to type it in dot uh, modules, not the modules, dot being gulp, and you can just type gulp straight away. So it's more dependent of, on your database work. For example, I, I have one single application that I have to manage, so it makes sense to have it on, on, a, global, on a global scope. Uh, after, after you do the npm init and install 
with safe dev, you are going to have this final one. And after that, you just, want, you just need to get this file in any place and do an npm install. It's going to install gulp and all that. And let's get into the gulp file, where you can actually define all the tests that you wanted to run on your project. As I mentioned before, gulp is a task runner. You can define tasks and it runs them. Simple, straightforward. Uh, but you need to define them first, of course. Uh, by the full, you have this simple code here. It's, this is the simplest way to, to define a task. All you need to do is, is the, define the test name and the callback that's going to be called when you run that. And you can also chain multiple tests into one. For example, if you call the default one, it's going to call first the CSS task and then the JS task. And optionally, you can also have like some kind of middleware. So after the JS, you could also pass a callback. So that's pretty, pretty nice. And to run that, you can either say the name with gulp default, that's going to, the, the, you can say the, the gulp and the task name, or if you are using this default task name, you just say gulp. So ideally, if you are going to, to deploy a website, all you need to do is like go up and all the, the tasks that need to be like a, uh, needs to, to run to run all the compile stuff, things for the production environment. You just want to go, and we can also do multiple tasks. So let's say that you have you don't want to do the, the full one, but you still want to have the CSS and JS task running in one single go. So you can say go up JS CSS, and you can just go crazy on that. But let's go with some real world examples with less. Uh, on this example, we're going to use the GoPlus packages that compile less files. And all the, the plugins that GoP has are basically NPM modules. So as long as the NPM or, or the module is defined on the npm.js website, we are good to go. Uh, if you are going to create any plugin for Gulp, it's better to have like some kind of prefix like Gulp less and things like that. So the usually name, usually conventions have the Gulp slash and the plugin name. So you can just do a find on npm to see all the available packs that Gulp provides. Uh, in this example, we are going to use Bootstrap and the last less plugin. And this is, this, this is the simple example that you can use for get going and compile the, the bootstrap project. So in this case, also, this C CSS is not a typo. That's the compiled CSS folder that we, we, we have on CakePHP. But you can, of course, you can choose your own directory. And the build about using Gulp as not using growth, grunt, or any other uh, task automatization is that you can use streams with Gulp. So you can basically pipe multiple things into one. So for example, here I am basically compiling the, the last files, but let's say that you want to also minify it. So all you need to do is like pipe and then use the, the Gulp minify plugin for that, and you can just put as many as pipe as you want. After we, after we defined the, the, the last task, all you need to do is do a gulp less. And after a few minutes or seconds, you are going to end up with the bootstrap.css file, as we defined in the previous, previous uh, task. Any questions? Yes? Isn't going to be CCS? CCS? Yes, it is. <laughs> that was a typo, sorry. That actually was a typo. More questions? Yes? Can you compile different terms of the JavaScript files into one file and the other ones in the other one or whatever? So you got like two different files in the JavaScript file? Come again? Let's start. Like if you have using strict in JavaScript, then that is based by the entire file. 
So the question is if you can actually divide multiple files in, yeah. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, when, you do, when you define the task, you can pass the specific file that you want, or you can pass a list of files that you want to compile, or let's oh, actually the source files that you want to use for that operation. So you can have one single file, or like for example, use the uh, star star slash to get like all the folders, you know. So that's pretty cosmos up on that part. Yeah. More questions? All right. So this is it. I mean, this is just straightforward. And all right. And if you have any questions uh, regarding that, you can also ping us on Twitter with Hanan and Scorsadan or Fahad. So I also just ping Fahad for that. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>